Welcome to the SSA What's New in Abacus 2017 webinar. So we're going to talk about Abacus CFD and what's happening with that. I'll then talk about Abacus CAE, the enhancements to the front end, and it's good to see some of those. Then we'll look at some kind of general trends in the Abacus uh, development scheme. There are, there are some common themes to the way in which the product's developing at the moment. One of those is definitely multi-scale modeling. Uh, we'll look at some stuff to do with contact. Abacus is all about contact, and we'll look at what they've been working on in 2016 to enhance the, the offering in that direction, some very interesting stuff and some very specific stuff. Um, the ability of Abacus to do additive manufacturing is, has been kind of trumpeted and highlighted quite a lot recently. 2017 is the first release where Abacus users get to get their hands on the additive manufacturing processes and the additive manufacturing software. Then, as kind of is usual in these scenarios, a little bit on material models. There's some new material models that have been developed and are released, something on linear dynamics, and then a new element that has kind of been added to the somewhat extensive family of Abacus elements. We'll start looking at uh, CA enhancements to this environment and we've started to see support for new Abacus solver functionality. So as you'd expect, there are numerous small Abacus CA enhancements and they are focused on kind of uh, ease of use, tidying things up and small speed enhancements, just what you'd expect from Abacus CA. A really good thing and a really good point I'd like to make at this point is that we're going to look at a lot of new Abacus solver capability and pretty much all of that capability can be accessed using Abacus 2017. There are certain areas where that uh, new functionality is command line or input deck only, but all of those functionalities, the support for Abacus CA is very, very close to being delivered. So I'm going to just do a quick trip through a quick run through the, the Abacus CAE enhancements. Um, as I said, numerous small things all about usability, so consistency checking for regions for section assignments, new set surface queries, geometry and element face normal queries, all sorts of kind of housekeeping, small efficiency changes that, that we, you know, everyone wants to see. Uh, I really like the idea of relaxed object name lengths, if you could call them mate or something, but really it's about being able to use extended, essentially string length names for objects, which kind of frees up you know, the scope for what you're trying to do. You can also have things like independent datum features. All of these things are essentially been asked for by the customer base. So we can go through the, through the list of advocacy enhancements. There, there are quite a few of these things, and it really signals the fact that product development is now off and going again. So we've got contact controls can be applied to groups of contact pairs. We've got much more with linked viewports. And then we've got the last kind of um, slide full of CA enhancements. So things to do with being able to create steps and ODBs manually. As you can see, there's a big list of Abacus CAE enhancements that are focused on usability and developing kind of the ability to pre and post process the new solver capabilities that are being delivered in 2017. One of the big themes in the world of Simula at the moment is multi-scale analysis. I think everybody in the everybody who's a final element engineer is used to different levels of detail in different sizes of, of model. We could have local models, we can have sub-modeling. So we're already very used to the concepts of multi-scale analysis. Um, the way of kind of direction of travel with Simulia is to extend that at both ends. Um, the most specific end that we're kind of working with with Abacus at the moment is a kind of downward scale approach where we're looking at things like uh, representative volume modeling and and that sort of kind of multi-scale approach to allow us to model materials in more detail. So essentially the multi-scale analysis stuff I'm going to look at now is about extending from kind of simple in inverted commas material models to material modeling approaches which allow us to consider combinations of materials that are like composites and fiber reinforced plastics and, and some biomaterials and essentially um, 2017 brings us two approaches for modeling that. We've got a thing called mean field homogenization. Now, it possibly contains the scariest set of uh, 
release slides you're likely to see. Midfield homogenization is a, is a technique that allows us to include essentially something like matrix and inclusions to material system, material distributions, and calculate the, the behavior of those under certain loads and, and, and displacements. So we have this kind of semi-analytical approach based on defining a unit cell, and we have predefined unit cells defining what those materials are, and then we can come up with a kind of composite material relationship that allows us to use, well, we can use that material definition in the abacus solve. As an FE engineer, though, if you were tasked with the idea or the, the job of calculating what happens to small, small models of variable material distributions and components made up of multiple uh, parts and material definitions, plainly the way in which you do that is a finite element model. So uh, another approach beyond the kind of um, Mori Tanaka type of approach we've just looked at is a thing called a representative volume element. RVEs have, have been around for a, a quite a long time and are quite established in their, in their usage. An RVE allows you to model a subset of the material and then calculate a response which is then used in Abacus. So RVE technology has been around a long time what is new is the ability to build one of these RVEs and you build it in exactly the same way as you build any other abacus model you, you kind of create a material you mesh it uh, and then you can use uh, the RVE capability inside abacus 2017 to apply periodicity and have a look at way in which the thing uh, interacts as a whole and create these material definitions that can be used to populate again or to describe the material model that Abacus uses to represent what the component level model is doing. So we can link, using Abacus, we can link the RVE model to the behavior of the overall model. Abacus, as I've said at the beginning, is, is a product that is a lot about contact. And as you'd expect, any new release of Abacus sees development in the contact area. So the first big ticket improvement to 2017 is that we now have the ability to define cohesive behavior and general contact. As you can see, all of these things look like technology that's going to be useful in the world of multi-scale modeling. So if, the, the, if we're looking at debonding in, in kind of granular structures, if we're looking at fiber matrix debonding, you can see that these things start to look like what you'd include in a decent RVE to build up a good damage type picture. So cohesive behavior and general contact has been added to Abaca standard in 2017. Uh, really, really pretty example of that. What I really like is this honeycomb plate. Uh, if you look at the kind of general overall picture, it doesn't look that exciting. But when you look at the, uh, the zoomed in picture, you can see that we've built the, or the DS people have built proper representation of the honeycomb using shell elements and it's not using a continuous mesh. All of the connections between the cells and the, and the outer skins are created using cohesive contact and that then allows you some very interesting behavior as we load the thing in extreme situations. Cohesive contact can break down and we can look at the way in which the thing collapses progressively. So, so general contact in, uh, with cohesive behavior sort of frees you up to do some more kind of creative things in extreme situations. So anyway, beyond cohesive contact in, the, in, in general contact, there's a, a new linear contact solver. This was first announced in the SEC in 2015, and it allows uh, efficient addressing of a, of a very specific type of contact problem. Um, if you've got a contact problem with frictionless small sliding behavior and there are no other sources of material nonlinearity, then you can use an LCP solver, which will essentially and effectively increase the speed of solution. The first thing that I didn't really notice looking at this slide was that that's a log scale of runtime. So what initially and superficially looks like a small speed up when you look at it on the log scale is quite a significant speed up. This speed up is only available in certain restricted scenarios. So if you have a look at that, essentially the problem has to have small amounts of contact in the model. So as long as it's linear and there's small amounts of contact, you can expect a significant speed improvement in the solve times. Uh, another contact example, another contact enhancement, um, thick beam contact, 
we've always been able to do beam to surface contact or certainly recently it's been available technology 2017 allows us to use the thick beam as the master and the the important and the interesting thing about this functionality is that if we twist the beam if we impart a rotation to the beam it can then transfer that rotation to shell elements or surfaces um, and transfer that motion which is a kind of new functionality which is useful in a number of scenarios. Um, XFEM is uh, an interesting technology that most people are probably aware of. It's a technology that allows you to simulate cracks going through meshes without the kind of headache of continually remeshing and redescribing the problem. Plainly, as you generate a crack in a, pro in a, in a piece of material, you're going to create exposed surfaces and the, the big update in 2017 is those exposed surfaces can now take part in in, in contact relationship in contact scenarios so as we, we expose an, an edge of the surface that can then take part in a general contact model so that provides uh, quite an enhancement to that sort of technology another contact uh, enhancement and isotropic friction we can have different frictions in two different directions uh, an obvious uh, application of that would be in, in crash modeling of seat belts and you can see in this fairly simple example that the anisotropic and isotropic friction results have given the solution a different look so something that we've been putting a lot of effort into SSA and something that um, I personally are very interested in is additive manufacturing process simulation um, this technology has been marketed and talked about extensively over the last year 18 months and 2017 is the first year that this technology or the first release of this technology is generally available look the good thing about additive manufacturing process simulation is that Abacus is incredibly well set up to, to perform these sort of simulations we're looking at thermal effects, we're looking at nonlinear materials, we're looking at large strains, all of these things uh, are things that Abacus does well. So the development of an AM process simulation functionality is, is, is an obvious thing to have done and basing it on core Abacus functionality means that it's reliable and, and, and useful. There have been a number of material model enhancements as you'd imagine from Abacus. Um, they've added a number of functions, multilinear kinematic hardening, nonlinear damage initiation for ductile materials, rate-dependent cohesive behavior in Abacus Explicit. We've got LARC composite failure model added. We've got enhancements to the PRF model. I know if ever there was an underused piece of technology, it would be the parallel real logical framework, which is a really, really important piece of technology if you're modeling plastics and polymers and time dependency. And then again, in that essential same technical ballpark we've got a structural relaxation model that have been added so I count uh, six additional material models in the 2017 Abacus release so uh, 2017 has a, a new 3D solid element and it's essentially uh, an, a, something that builds on the 3D continuum shell element 3D continuum shell element was something that for me kind of almost revolutionized my approach and my view on 3D modeling and, and, and how you do things using shell elements and you may remember I did a web webinar on that a number of months ago, maybe a couple of years back. So the 3D continuum shell element was, was a great thing but it didn't have full 3D behavior through thickness. It had a, as a plain stress behavior through the thickness. The new brick shell element, CS S8 element has full 3D behavior through the thickness which kind of improves its accuracy, it's a better element and as you'd imagine is well suited for modeling composite solids. As, as is also usual in, in an Abacus uh, update, they've done a lot of work on linear dynamics, all ba a lot of it based around the uh, modal superposition solver, so we've got um, performance in enhancements and we've got scope enhancements. As I said, lots of development around linear dynamics which again points to a, a kind of improved or an increased amount of usage in Abacus for that sort of scenario and that sort of solution. So in summary 2017 is uh, increasingly looks like a very important release. Um, there are a number of technical themes around 
multi-scale modeling, around enhancements to contact, and there are a number of other themes. And, and, the, and the significant point that I, I hope comes out of this is that we're starting again to see developments back on the CAE interface, which most Abacus users tend to use. So there have been significant solver enhancements in 2017. You, there, there's a lot of science there, there's a lot of physics, and there's a lot of solver development, and, and uh, that is a very, very good thing to see and, and points to a product that's being actively developed as a, as a solver engine. And those developments, contrary to a viewpoint that many people may have kind of developed over the last couple of years, a lot of these, all of these solver developments we've talked about are available in the CAE environment to a traditional Abacus user. And that is a, is a good thing and a good point to take home. So uh, I'd like to thank everybody for their, their attention and listening in on this webinar. And I'd just like to point out that if anyone wants the presentation material, it's all available. And I think all you need to do is email info at ssanalysis.co.uk and we'll send it out to you. So uh, at that point, I'll finish up and thank you very much for your attention.